it's going to be with me, you know, the rest of my life. Why did he catch that bullet and I didn't? I had to give up my entire psyche to go to war. 2.3 million American soldiers have been deployed to Iraq, Afghanistan, or both as of August 2011. Of those brave hearts, one in five come back with a condition they try to keep locked away. Some of the things that we, I, ha I did uh, still haunt me. Uh, when you have to take another life, anybody with any soul, it's going to bother them. Whether, you know, they were trying to kill me. It was self-preservation. I lost a couple good buddies. That, that's a lot of it too. Post-traumatic stress disorder or PTSD is a psychiatric disorder that occurs after someone experiences life-threatening events, such as active military duty. I went to you and I uh, initially upon getting back from my second appointment to go to school there. And, uh, you know, I signed up for the orientation. I was basically, I already admitted, I just had to go through orientation. And I couldn't even make it through the entirety of the orientation. I was walking around campus and all I was doing the entire orientation was looking at every window, looking at every rooftop, being very nervous around all of these random people that I've never met before, being very agitated. Um, and halfway through I had to walk off campus and ended up not enrolling at UNI until two years later. I went to Hawkeye instead. Um, and that's one of the more subtle things that comes with post-traumatic stress disorder is you don't feel safe where you're at. Individuals who suffer from PTSD experience a variety of symptoms. A sense of fear and worry and whatnot. Um, I do get really quick to aggression. I get really ticked off really quickly. He was just very angry and he wasn't really sure how to deal with those emotions properly. Wife always telling me she feels like she's walking on eggshells around me. Um, don't know how I'm feeling. He would get angry and I was the closest thing to him. So he would, you know, lash out at me. There was a lot of anger. That first year was pretty rough. Drinking and not being able to hold a job. I did a lot of drinking. Uh, some flashbacks and nightmare and not much sleep. Being killed, being in combat again, uh, losing one of my buddies. The number of diagnosed PTSD cases has jumped 50% in the past year alone, which does not include the people who keep their experiences locked away. Post-traumatic stress disorder was first coined in 1980. But what about those who served previously and couldn't find the key? My brother, he got drafted um, in 69 under the lottery system. Um, he was a gunner on a tank. And uh, my mother was passing with cancer and uh, I had talked to her. We was by ourselves and she says, did your brother ever tell you that he got a bronze star in Vietnam? And I says, Mom, I says, my brother won't talk about the war. We don't talk about the war. As being a Vietnam veteran, as a general rule, most of us, you know, don't talk about the war. I uh, didn't want to kind of put it in the past. The war zone is not the only battlefield. Loved ones back home are fighting their own enemy, their emotions. I had to stay constantly busy or else you kind of think about it too much. We see each other maybe like three times a year. There's not really anything you can do about it. So you try not to worry as much as possible and try not to let them know that you worry about it. We wrote letters back and forth as much as possible. We still got our letters that we had wrote back and forth. My oldest daughter was born when I was gone in Egypt. As a matter of fact, I was found out two weeks after I left that my wife was pregnant. You have this new joy in your life, but then you don't know how to uh, go about with things at home, how to be that father figure, how to make up all that time that you missed. I've had to decide if this is going to make me happy. 
if I should like continue this relationship, although like I might not like the lifestyle. And I've come to the conclusion that even if I don't like the lifestyle, it'd be so much worse not spending that time with him. Soldiers physically come home, but are mentally still in the battlefield, questioning every move they make. You, you really start doubting yourself, particularly, you really start questioning a lot of things you did. Like, for instance, the instance in Baghdad going through and clearing every house, like we would literally destroy people's lives. We would knock over dishes, we would throw over bookshelves looking for weapons, and it's like, was this the right thing to do? Was this ethical? Um, and that's probably the hardest thing is really looking back and really doubting what you did. Did we do the right thing? You know, was invading Iraq the right thing to do? Um, was exiling all the Ba'athists the right action? Did that really set Iraq up for success? He was starting to kind of try to rationalize what he had done during his first deployment and his second deployment. And um, yeah, just a lot of anger. When years and years of military training has taught you to lock up your feelings and emotions, it's hard to find a key to release the pain. You know, getting help is not something that I ever did. And it's something that most, most grunts don't do unless it really consumes the entirety of their lives. The reality is you're perpetually told that you're not broke, you're not broke, you're not broke. And if you are broke, here's your motor and your water drive on. Getting the help, um, didn't know where to go, who to turn to. Um, taking medications. Um, wife always telling me she feels like she's walking on eggshells around me. Um, don't know how I'm feeling. So I end up taking, um, getting, finally getting help, uh, taking medication, and then the side effects of the medication wasn't helping all that much. I initially saw a, psycho a psychologist, a therapist, and I did it for about two months, um, and I hated every minute of it because not only was I saying I was broke, but I was also getting doped up on drugs, and I didn't like that very much. With us, you know, we, we just shut it off. I mean, we didn't, we didn't have any help like that. Sad to say, but, you know, once you got out of service, you were on your own. Now I know how, how bad it is for those guys and gals, because I know how to handle it, and it still bothers me. I got back from Afghanistan and was um, been going through some counseling um, for uh, PTS, uh, post-traumatic stress. Started getting counseling and then I would turn to try to see about a service doc. Um, and from there, I've had uh, been going through uh, with Retrieve Freedom with Copper for being my service doc. The burden of post-traumatic stress disorder can be too much for the veteran to handle let alone his or her family. Service dogs provide a companionship that can lift the emotional overload. Where others judge, a dog will listen. Retrieving Freedom is an organization that's a nonprofit organization that trains service dogs for disabled veterans, kids with autism, and veterans with post-traumatic stress. When petting the dog, you release oxytocin, and the dog releases oxytocin, so it builds a bond. Um, and the argument is, at least in most of the research that I've seen, is that when you're in the military, your oxytocin levels are like through the roof because there's all this bonding that's going on. And the dog acts as a supplement for that. A dog can nudge and break anxiety. You know, a dog can get on your lap when you're in a situation that you know, things aren't going the best or the way you wanted them to. A dog can jump up out of the bed in the middle of a nightmare at night and run over and turn your light switch on and wake you up and jump back on bed and lick your face. Okay, all those things that you cannot do by yourself. Okay, that's why it's a service dog, because it's a disability that you have that you cannot do by yourself. Helping them acclimate back into society, uh, helping them to be able to experience the things that we do on a daily basis without thinking about um, you know, the privileges that we've had or the opportunities that have been given to us. It's not really about the dogs, it's more about the people that are going to be getting the dogs. I had my daughter's birthday, um, Macy's, I got to have her enjoy her company at Applebee's. Uh, she wanted to go to Applebee's, 
So we went there and I actually got to enjoy and spend time with my family and actually conversate with them. Um, and I had copper and due to having copper, I was able to enjoy my daughter's birthday. Six months ago, when I met him, uh, he wouldn't even look me in the eye when he talked to me. And now he's going he's at the class, talking in front of the, all the students. He's been at several uh, American Legion functions where he's talked in front of a lot of people. Uh, it, it changed his life. But it goes way beyond that especially with local veterans within our community and within the area because you can get a service dog and you can help train the service dog and you can get into public and you can help fundraise and you can meet new people and you can really have a whole um, picture there that puts things together that, that are hard to, to fight with post-traumatic stress. He's kind of been there by my side and pulling me through those uh, things that really just uh, my triggers. You throw anybody else in the room, any human being, and whether they're judging that veteran or not, that veteran doesn't know. But if you were a dog sitting on that stool right now, I would not be worried in the least bit because he'd be looking at it saying, what have I got to do to get over to that stool to sit with you? You know, that's all he'd be thinking about. And, and I would know that and that's why they work. These dogs are saved lives. By donating to Retrieving Freedom, you're helping a veteran get a tool um, that'll help him reintegrate into society. They are definitely some of the most important people that have, you know, walked in this country because they have they have given up their time, um, their life, uh, made sacrifices that have, you know, faced uh, this that have definitely shaped this country. Why shouldn't people donate to Retrieving Freedom? Yeah, it's just an amazing opportunity to, to do something very small that has major ramifications and, and a huge impact for other people. Said for a long time, it's kind of ironic what dog spelled backwards is. Freedom's not free. There's no question it's not free. But now what we have to look at is what we can give back or what we can do for the freedoms that were provided. People every day risk their lives for ours gave their lives, their limbs, uh, in some cases their sanity, so that we could live like we do today. And we often forget what others have done, what others have sacrificed, um, time, money, lives, um, to be able to enjoy the things that we do. There's sacrifices that have to be made, and that's where the cost comes from. They're out there, they're, they're fighting for our freedom, and, and freedom is not free. And it's not free. So be prepared to pay up because your soldiers certainly did.